In the crowded Seoul International Airport, a striking young man walks with a perfect posture, sporting a black business suit with well-made hair. A girl, walking with a coffee in one hand and talking on her phone with another, bumps into the man and spills her coffee. At first, she rudely calls out to him, but upon seeing his handsome face, she goes quiet. He walks away from her, without paying attention to her. Seeing his demeanor, the girl gets offended, but behind her, someone assures her that she wasn't the one he responded rudely to. Turning back, she sees another handsome man with a gentle smile and glasses. Flustered, she bows her head, the basic Korean greeting of respect. The cold one out of the two men stares at an advertisement of dumplings, getting mad at the fact that the dumplings cannot even be seen in the ad, which consists of the face of a celebrity. He asks the man in glasses, seemingly his secretary, to call the agency in charge of this ad. From the vivid view of the TV advertisement, the scene changes to a girl, wearing a go-food white coat, making food. She gets a call from someone named Ms. Yo. Shin Ha Rai, the girl notifies them that she is on her way. She gets her luscious brown hair out of her ponytail and rushes to meet the person who seems to be her boss. The people in the lobby stray away from her because of the smell of mackerel on her. Her higher-ups spray her with perfume to mask the smell. They are standing outside the ceremony for the inauguration of President Kang Ti Mu. The girl who smells is a researcher at the same company, or so it seems. The group of four people walk inside and sit near the back. Two of them gossip about the new CEO that is to join them, the girl claiming that she has heard he's really hot. The researcher who smells of fish jokes about the ugly chairman sitting in the front, stating that the grandson cannot be attractive if the grandfather isn't. The inauguration begins and the same person from the airport, the one who was wearing glasses walks on stage. He introduces himself as Chief Secretary Cha Sung Hoon, who is here on behalf of President Kang. He is here to deliver President Kang's inauguration address in place of him. The crowd murmurs among themselves. The oddly rude action of the new CEO seems to have everyone baffled. Cha Sung Hoon reads aloud the message written by President Kang, which includes him telling the important executives to only meet him during business meetings and not for ceremonial functions. The scene changes to a golf course, where an old man seems to be agitated during his play. The people around him console him. It looks like he expected himself to be the next CEO, not President Kang. The man, Mr. Park receives a gift from one of the people surrounding him and they all laugh. From the back, a man aims his golf ball and throws it right in the air. The ball lands perfectly in its goal. Seeing this, the group of people scream. There, walking to them in all his glory is the new President Kang, known as Kang Timu. Kang Timu berates the older Mr. Park for various corrupt activities that he has been taking place in. In a threatening tone, he tells the man that he will be looking at company matters more closely. Timu walks away, running a hand through his perfectly made hair as the sprinklers turn on behind him, soaking the group of people. Inside the Go Food building, the lady in red announces that they will be going to Auntie's street food for Ms. Shin's birthday. The girl who was cooking fish, known as Ms. Shin bashfully exclaims that they didn't have to do anything for her birthday, but one of the co-workers says the team should stick together. Ms. Shin gets a text from someone, asking to meet her later. Ms. Shin beckons Ms. Yo to come closer and asks if she can skip tonight's team dinner. Ms. Yo asks if it's because of a guy, to which Ms. Shin gets surprised, asking how she knew. Ms. Yo cheekily says that Shin Ha-Rai's soulless eyes are suddenly sparkling. Ms. Shin apologizes to her colleagues and promises to pay for the next dinner and leaves. On the train to the guy she is meeting, Ha-Rai smiles shyly. There she gets a call from her friend who apologizes for not being able to celebrate her birthday and asks what she has planned. Ha-Rai shyly tells her friend that Min Woo wants to see her, so she is going to him. She has on a wide smile and seems very excited about it. The two girls remember last year when it was Ha-Rai's birthday and Min Woo might have bought her a really expensive necklace. But Ha-Rai declines the idea. However, her friend thinks that Min Woo might want to change from being friends to being a boyfriend. The scene changes to President Kang who enters the company upon being received by his secretary and asks about the chairman's reaction to him not being at his own ceremony. Right at that moment, his father, the chairman, exits from the elevator and calls Kang a crazy bird. His grandfather hits him while they are walking down the hallway claiming that his grandson thinks he's smarter than everyone. To which Kang replies that none of his projects have ever failed. The chairman, looking pleased proposed another project to his grandson, in hopes that he will do it perfectly. Kang surprisingly seems excited about the new project and asks, what it is. After a humorous pause, the chairman exclaims marriage. That is something Kang refuses immediately. Kang states that he has no time to meet ladies nor is he seeing anyone. The chairman, having a cheeky expression tells him that he has set several blind dates for his grandson, with at least 20 elite, single ladies in the business world. The old man's alarm rings, and funnily enough, it's a reminder telling him it's time for his daily drama. The old man sits in the office and watches TV, making Kang Ti Musai exasperated. Shin Ha Rai walks to her friend, Min Woo and when she enters the restaurant he works at, 
it's really dark. There, in the light of the kitchen, Minwoo walks to her with the cake in his hands while all Ha Rai can think of are her fiend's words, friendship trained to the boyfriend express. Ha Rai runs to her friends with imaginary fireworks in her head, but as she gets closer she notices that the cake has other people's names written on it. She tries to stop herself from running, but is unable to and bumps into the cake, ruining it. From the back, the guest couple for whom the cake was for get frustrated. Ha Rai walks to the bus stop, wearing a disappointed look on her face. The friend she assumed would be confessing his love to her, instead gave her tickets to her favorite singer's concert. What's worse is that he emphasized the fact that they were expensive, so she should go with a guy she is interested in, instead of her friend, Young Seo. Back at the company, Timu eats instant food as his grandfather lectures him again about finding a wife. Finally have had enough, he gets frustrated and raises his voice at his grandfather. Not phased in the slightest, the grandfather asks if Timu and his secretary, Sung Hoon are dating and only using work as an excuse to be together. The secretary smoothly clarifies that he's not interested in men. But even if he was, the president is not his type, to which Kang looks at him and asks what's so wrong about him. The grandfather's alarm rings again, this time for his blood pressure medication, something that Kang states runs in the family. After getting more frustrated by his grandson's straightforwardness, the chairman holds his head in his hands and leaves. Meanwhile, Ha Rai helps out in her family's restaurant scolding her mother for not coating the chicken well enough. She asks why Ha Rai is in a bad mood, to which her father replies that it is obvious she is in a bad mood, because she had to go to work even on her birthday. Again, the scene changes back to the chairman, who seems to be in a hospital with Kang and the secretary present in the room as well. When the doctor notifies them that the old man is healthy, he pokes the doctor and makes up a bunch of issues that he had. Basically, he wants to lie to his grandson about his own health for his own reasons. Timu leaves the room after saying he has to go. At her family restaurant, Ha Rai complains about her parents giving the guests a discount, and even then they fill up free snacks in their bowls. While her mother scolds Ha Rai, asking if she has a boyfriend who can throw her a birthday party, there is a ruckus outside. The restaurant in front of them is fighting with Ha Rai's brother about leaving their restaurant trash in front of his place. The hot-headed mother loudly exclaims that the trash is full of fish bones, and they only sell chicken. There is a little shoving back and forth with the trash and Ha Rai accidentally pushes a little too hard, making the man fall to the floor, while she stares wide-eyed. Back at the Shin household, they have a family meeting where they talk about the family's anger issues, minus Ha Rai's father. The mother scolds Ha Rai, saying that it was enough for her son Ha Min to fight, but she did not have to join in. Ha Rai's mother hits her and she angrily gets up and goes to her room. Inside the room she remembers what Min Woo said, while handing her concert tickets and sighs loudly. She falls into bed, covering herself with a warm-looking blanket for the night. The next morning, Kang has breakfast with his grandfather. Before he can get a word in, his grandfather cuts him off, saying that he got a call from Mr. Park. Timu tells him that he plans to fire Mr. Park, against his grandfather's wishes. The chairman tries to stop it, but Kang is persistent. Finally agreeing, the old man asks for something in return, for Timu to go on blind dates, something he agrees to. Inside Go Food, the people get the news that Mr. Kang is fired. This sets in stone how strict the new boss is. Over lunch, Young Seo, Ha Rai's friend hears about the blunder Ha Rai made last night, and laughs about it incredulously. Young Seo gets a call from her father, he tells her about the blind date she has to attend, something she is angry about. The girls walk to the date, as young Seo tells her friend about her plans to marry the love of her life, instead of being stuck in an arranged marriage. She asks Ha Rai to go on the blind date instead of her, and the girls reminisce about how Ha Rai once pretended to be possessed, when she went on a blind date in place of young Seo. After a lot of cute convincing, young Seo offers to pay Ha Rai, the offer which the long-haired girl cannot refuse. Kang's secretary notifies him of the blind date he will be going to, a coffee shop at Imperial Hotel with Jin Young Seo from the Marine Group. Kang says he's busy, but his grandfather had already seen that reply coming, and has asked Secretary Cha to cancel all of Kang's appointments beforehand. The secretary advises Kang to finally marry so they do not have to face such discrepancies in their work schedule. And hearing this, Kang Timu gets an idea. Young Seo bring Ha Rai to a clothing store to pick out clothes for the blind date. After trying on several dresses, Ha Rai gets her makeup done by her friend and arrives at the coffee shop, looking dazzling. Kang Timu arrives, and Ha Rai can't believe she has to mess things up with such a handsome fellow. But nevertheless, she starts her acting, pretending to be rude. Until she sees his business card, that's when she realizes that she has met up with the CEO of the company she works at. She excuses herself to the bathroom and calls Young Seo. Upon seeing her reflection in the mirror, she gets an idea of running away. However, she is unable to. Her hands shake as she goes on to pretend to be a rude, rich woman. With an obnoxious voice, she says it's getting too hot 
and takes her coat off, thinking to herself that no man likes a woman who shows too much skin. Next, she pretends to be obsessed with the luxurious branded products she has, thinking that men are turned off by women who are crazy about luxury goods. But as she looks towards Kang, he is busy on his phone and didn't notice her little act. Onto her final act, she loudly tells him that she is sad that he seems so uninterested in her, and says that it makes Samantha and Rachel very sad. Her baby is that she spent a lot on afterwards laughing loudly. Kang Timu chokes a little on his coffee and hides his smile, and then says that he likes how honest she is. She sees that her acts aren't working and gets ready to pull out the big guns. She flirtatiously makes a roaring gesture at him and tells him that if he likes her, they should get a room. He stares surprisingly at her and then to her feet, which are shaking. He smirks. Contrary to her plan to scare him off, he actually does book a room walking ahead of her as he smirks. While following him up, she accidentally bumps into a woman who grabs Ha Rai by the hair, introducing herself as Min Sik's girlfriend. The woman who grabbed Ha Rai claims that she was in a room with Min Sik an hour ago and now she's going with another man. Even after seeing the proof on the woman's picture, Ha Rai denies the claim, but the woman comes forward to attack her again. Kang stops her, telling her to keep her boyfriend in check because it takes two to cheat. He then leaves with Ha Rai and calls his secretary. Ha Rai realizes that it might be a good thing in fending off the blind date, so she continues the act. The woman follows Ha Rai and runs after her. Ha Rai bids Kang goodbye and runs, almost getting trampled over by secretary Cha. On the way back, Kang Timu gets a call from his grandfather asking how the date went. And much to everyone's surprise, he states that he is going to marry the woman he met tonight. Ha Rai tells young Seo of what happened tonight, and they have dinner happily. After the dinner, the girls sing karaoke together when young Seo gets a call from her father. She comes home with a numb look on her face and tells Ha Rai that President Kang Ti Mu wants to marry her. Ha Rai, surprised at the nears can only muster up the words huh. Back at the office, Secretary Cha lectures Ti Mu over what kind of woman he should marry, but he hears none of it saying that he likes the woman he met. Back at Ha Rai's house, her mother asks her about the new CEO excitingly, but Ha Rai throws a fit and goes to her room. She goes to her room and gets a call from her friend, who is out hiding in a hotel room. Because after Kang agreed to a marriage with her, the families have been trying to get together. Ha Rai advises her to tell everyone the truth of the blind date, that would stop the talks of marriage as well. She worries if she will run into President Kang, but Young Seo assures that a regular employee will never run into the chairman. The next day while running to work to get to her room before her co-worker does, Ha Rai runs into Kang, the chairman and the secretary, quickly turning her head back before he sees and recognizes her. She hides her face with her hair and stands in front of the men, quickly getting out on the 10th floor, but dropping her ID card in the elevator. Kang Timu reads her name off of it and calls out to her. She walks backwards and quickly takes her ID without looking back and runs away, leaving an amused chairman and a confused Kang, who repeats her name after she is gone. Inside his room, he searches her up and realizes that she was the employee that came up with a successful business proposal. But the grandfather wants to talk about Kang's marriage and pushes the topic of a blind date. Timu assures his grandfather that he wants him to have grandchildren, and then boasts about himself and how nobody will ever reject him. Later, the old man talks to Secretary Cha about how Timu lost his parents at an early age and didn't have many people to are for him, as he was growing up. That's why he wants his grandson to have a family of his own. He says the same for Secretary Cha, telling him to get a girlfriend soon. Some time later, Ha Rai calls young Seo and asks her to clarify to the Kang family soon so she can get out of this mess. After getting off the phone, young Seo bumps into a little kid at the department store, who accidentally scribbles over her expensive suit. She does not get angry, instead, she teaches the kid not to run around with a marker in a nice way. Coincidentally, Secretary Cha who witnessed the whole scene is impressed by the mysterious woman's patience, even though her dress looks very expensive. She leaves the store, forgetting her wallet and keys, and turns back to get them. And as she does, she runs into Cha Sung Hoon, whose face shines in the evening light. Young Seo's eyes light up as she stares at him with romantic music playing in the background. She imagines flowers all around her and acknowledges his beauty, stating that she has found her love. He hands her the drink she dropped and leaves. Young Seo gets a call from Kang Ti Mu, who wants to meet her. Young Seo once again tells Ha Rai to go in her place and reject the president. At first she blatantly refuses but Young Seo guilt trips her friend into agreeing. Once again, Ha Rai is clad in expensive clothes waiting for Kang to come so she can reject him. Kang walks to the girl who's sitting, noting the fact that he is calling Young Seo's number and it isn't ringing on the woman's phone. He asks if she has two phones and saves his number on her phone. Ha Rai calls him rude and asks why she would marry a man she only met once. After rejecting him, she walks out, leaving a very agitated Kang Ti Mu, who follows her outside and holds her arm, 
insisting that they get married. He gets close to her ear and says in a low voice that he is good at many things. After hearing this she almost falls off the stairs but he stares at her and persists that they go on 10 dates. Haughtily, Ha Rai refuses the offer again and runs away. While crossing the street, she sees her crush, Min Wu crossing from the other side and in an attempt to hide herself, so he doesn't see her looking like this, she gets into a random car passing by. After she sits inside, she looks up to see that she has actually sat in Kang Ti Mu's car. They stare at each other with wide eyes. To continue watching the next episode, click on the video below or make sure to subscribe to get notified about it.